A few new faces will now call the Chicago Blackhawks locker room home as Antoine Vermette and Timo teaming him down the Indian head sweater for the stretch run. 19 regular season games remain to make some hay on the road to the Stanley Cup. And it starts with the Hawks and the Carolina Hurricanes coming up next. Trade deadline has come and gone this afternoon. The Blackhawks get back to business. They're on United Center Ice, a place they've had only one win in their last four starts. And tonight they take on a Eastern Conference team they don't see a lot of, the Carolina Hurricanes. Welcome in, everybody. Pat Foley and Eddie Olshek thrilled you with us for Chicago Blackhawks hockey. Yes, the trade deadline has come and gone. And General Manager Stan Bowman got busy. He didn't tinker. He went full bore. This is a go-for-it year. Yeah, Pat, and uh, I think it speaks volumes to the guys inside that locker room, the fan base, the commitment from ownership. This wasn't a double. This wasn't a triple. This was a grand slam <laughs> considering the injury to Patrick Kane. You bring in a guy like Antoine Vermette, versatile, a second-line center iceman for Joel Quindle, can play in every situation. You bring in a veteran guy, a character guy in Kimo Tiemann, can play anywhere in your top six. This is his first game of the season. He's been dealing with blood clots, Pat, and it's not the first time he's had issues with it, so something to keep an eye on as we move forward. I talked to him this morning. He's super jacked to be a part of the Blackhawks, but a strong message sent by the general manager. Well, the one move made today, too. Those were made a couple of days ago, but uh, the Blackhawks today sending Ben Smith out to the West Coast to get Andrew Desjardins, a guy who brings what is in short supply for Blackhawks forwards. He'll take a piece of you. Yeah, and he's got some size, Pat. He's got some heaviness. Uh, he can win some face-offs. You lose a guy like Ben Smith, who was so instrumental with Marcus Kruger up front in that first rotation, but you get a bigger body, it gives Coach Q some more options, and that's what you want as a coach. You want depth, you want options, a little bit of a different look, a little heavier, a little bigger. That's all a plus for the Blackhawks. All right, the Blackhawks take on a Carolina team we have not seen all season long, and they're going to miss the playoffs for the sixth straight year. So they were, they were very busy the trade deadline, too. They were sellers, but it's a team that still plays hard for rookie coach Bill Peters. They won their last three games. Yeah, Pat, and they still got some stars on this team. I mean, you got the Stahl brothers, you got Jeff Skinner, so they're a pretty good team, and they're going right now, but you look at what the Carolina Hurricanes have done here as of late. It's all about the future. It's all about acquiring assets, and when you can move Sakara, Gleason, and Toulouse and get some high draft picks, a very well-managed team, the Carolina Hurricanes. The GM is Ron Francis, maybe his best friend, except for the guys down next to him. All right, the Blackhawks so will be led by Corey Crawford tonight. He goes for his 25th win of the year, standing in the blue paint for Coach Q. Crawford and the Hawks against the Hurricanes when we come back. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Can we remove all hats to honor U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Mike Sanow, U.S. Marine Veteran Sergeant Clarence Bolthewis, and Joint Organist Frank Pellico, and soloist Jim Cornelison for the singing of our national anthem. and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Oh, it's 
the Ford goaltending matchup. Mentioned Corey Crawford a moment ago coming off his second shutout of the year. A 20 save whitewash of the Florida Panthers the other night down south. Crawford back into the blue for Coach Q tonight. And at the other end, 31-year-old Cam Ward who has won his last four starts and uh, just given up eight goals in his last four appearances. The officiating crew, led by that man, Devo, Paul Dvorsky, we're very sorry to say, is going to be retiring at the end of the season. He's paired up with uh, Rob Martell tonight, the linesman, Matt McPherson, and John Grant. And now we're underway. And this first period is brought to you by Chicago and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers. Mentioned to Eddie Paul Dvorsky, and uh, you know him quite well like yeah. I do. Terrific guy, 56 years of age, and... Uh, his final game on the ice is going to be April the 5th. He'll be able to do a game in Philly. And when officials get to this point where they're at the end, the uh, league lets them choose where they want to do their last game. He chose Philly, so hopefully he's hoping his dad can get to the game. Sure. Not uh, easy for him to travel anymore, so. But uh, great guy. That'll be a big loss for the uh, striped shirt crew when the uh, regular season comes to an end. I certainly wish him well. Future endeavors. Here's Taves trying to set one. Ward back to the side, and Eric Stahl moved it to Alexander Semin. Stahl and on Rosaval, who winds it around to Jomerson. Jomerson bounced it back the other way. Picked off Belmore, couldn't get it out past side. Now came loose. Here's Sharp driving, trying to shot. That was blocked. Good recovery by the uh, Carolina D. Now a pass tipped the team and it held it in centering. The pass never quite got to side. Into the corner it goes and Lyles has no stick. Belmore had it lost and here's Sharp, a stop attempt. And the puck seemed to escape him. They got it, tried to get to the backhand. Derby dumped it in the other way. Now Rask works on the end board. God help. It goes back to the line, a long shot, a sliding shot block by Brandon Saad. Vermette put it back to Saad, who will carry it back into the Carolina end. Here's Kruger into the corner. Marcus Kruger walks out in front of the back, catch a good save by Ward. And he's able to hang on. Well, this all started because of a good forecheck there, Pat, of... Nordstrom in on the forecheck. Good support. Brandon side extended shift. And then Marcus Kruger circling the wagon. I think he was surprised, Pat, at how, yeah. how much time he had. I mean, he got this puck on the half wall. Walk, walk, walk. He's got all this time. I mean, he circled so far out there. I think he was just shocked that he had so much space there. I think if he would have got his head up a little bit earlier, Pat, he might have been able to cut the corner a little tighter. And instead of taking a shot from 17 feet, it might have been only about 10 or 11. But a good quality chance there for Kruger. You can find the 18 TU versus Limes. They'll be at the top of your screen. And now Nash for Carolina, able to clear it to center ice. All the changes. Players in and out. New line combination here with Richards, Bickle, and Tara Vinan playing the right side. Well, based on the morning skate today, Tavo Tara Vinan didn't think he was going to be playing. He skated a lot extra after. And uh, when the morning skate finished, the trade had not yet been made for Ben Smith yet. So Smith practice was, it uh, looked like he was going to be in the lineup tonight. Then all of a sudden he gets shipped to San Jose and Tavo gets a call and... Uh, He's in the lineup, as Eddie said, with Richards and Bickle. That happened to me, Pat, at the end of my career. I got skated in the morning, and our pal Denny Savar was the assistant coach at that particular time, puts me through the paces, and uh, wasn't playing that night, and found myself walking into the United Center at 7 o'clock for the 7.30 game, and uh, they said, oh, by the way, you're playing. What? 
Did what? a big load of garbanzos <laughs> that afternoon? Or what? A couple of uh, tickets in my pocket that weren't, uh, weren't very good, but uh, yeah, didn't have didn't have any warm-ups at all. Just showed up and I think Dazer, big, big Eric Dazer had fallen uh, injured in the war in the uh, right before the warm-up. His back was acting up, so uh, got a chance to go out and play. And, didn't help the team. We lost to L.A. that night 5-1, to one, but I had my guy, just for the record. So that was one I'll never forget, though, uh, walking in the building and saying you're playing. So that I happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. If there's any reaction to the people that were sitting in my, in my seats that night. We were like, we were just with you 20 minutes ago, and you're playing. All right, now Shaw rolls it in. Shaw on the right side at the start of the game tonight with... Uh, Kruger and Nordstrom. The Canes. Jordan Stahl dumped it. Roosevelt back. Checked by Eric Stahl. Shaw rolled it up to Kruger. Now put it on the stick of Chalmerson. Nick Chalmerson. He's had 11 shot blocks in his last four games. Only really five out. Well, that's an inadvertent shot block. Shot block by uh, Jordan. Had no intention of getting away of that. It happened to hit him and dropped him. He's got the puck now and played it loose. And now Nestroso gets into the long slap shot. Crawford makes the save and covered it long enough for a whistle. A reminder as you enjoy the Coldwood Miller Times coming up later, brought to you by Miller Lite. Hey, Pat, if I could, I'd like to give a real special shout out to uh, the real Ed Olchek. Uh, He's officially retired as of today. He's out of the grocery right? store business. Yeah, Edmar Foods is uh, is no longer. Uh, the LaBelle family and the late Marty LaBelle have been in the Chicagoland market uh, in the grocery business since uh, the late 70s. And uh, my dad is officially retired. So dad, I couldn't be more proud of you. Nobody's worked harder. Nobody deserves this time coming up to uh, spend with mom and on the golf course. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Edmar Foods has uh, gone by the wayside, so congratulations to my dad. Well, that's uh, terrific. And... Oh, here's a great reception by the Canes, a blast, and it was fired wide by Skinner, who was kind of cherry-picking, but sure was. had himself a chance out of it. Well, to, uh, as you call him, the real Ed Olchek, that's uh, terrific Ooh. news, and now that can't, handicap's going to be even more <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> But I'm sure that uh, after his recent hip surgery, the start of the golf season not that far away, he will be ready and able to uh, stick a peg in the ground. Here's Jay McClellan digging in behind the Hawks goal. Derby came up with it, dropped it out. McClellan shot blocked. And Seabrook out of the Terrabine and a weak clear is held in. Seabrook. Well done this way, Timonen. Timonen and Seabrook, the early pairing for the Q defensive group. A steal by Semin on a pickle turnover. Semin with a wrist shot into the glove of Corey Crawford. Bullhawk fans, text lottery to 242957 for your chance to win an opportunity for two to attend a Blackhawks home game and ride the Zamboni. Text lottery to 242957 right now. And stay tuned for the drawing in the second period. You ever been on a Zamboni, partner? No, I never have. You? A couple of times. How is it? Thrilling? Hey, when you're looking to get some smooth ice to skate on, you're going to do whatever you have to, to get the Zamboni up there. Just glad I uh, had bumpers on there because there <laughs> were on the floor. Long pass for Jordan Stahl. He was uh, converged upon, and Hosa the other way. Arian Hosa gets the line. The Taves to Jalmerson. Walks to the backhand. Shooting. And a save by Ward. I think Jalmerson jo wanted to pass wanted that. To pass. Yeah, sure That's did. the last thing he did. Wanted to do was shoot it. He knows he has a couple of snipers around him, but couldn't find an open stick. The uh, Canes are able to clear it. Roosevelt's not played in the last two Hawks games. Here this to Jalmerson, then he got it back. Shaw only 
only got as far as center. Oh, good play there by Runblad. To, he was coming on a change for Rosaval. And when the puck came to Rosaval, Runblad jumped back off that. That's very alert. As if, uh, if both those guys are out there when it's played, it's going to be a penalty. Duncan Keith, give it a run, Blad. Nordstrom into the zone, looks to center with behind Shaw. Runblad tried along with the block. Both can stick for Gerby on that play. Now Keith dropped it to Kruger, threw it to the other corner. Nordstrom is checked. Rash trying to work a noose to tell him run blad along check. Good save long rebound. He lunges to cover it up. Good work and flexibility by Cam Ward to keep the game scoreless early on. Welcome back to the United Center up at press level. I'm Tracy Myers for CSN Chicago.com. Newly acquired Kimo Timonen is excited to join the Blackhawks and go on another Stanley Cup run. His last one with Philly in 2010 still stings, especially because he was on the ice with Patrick Kane scored that goal. Timonen said it's a tough memory. It's the closest I've ever come to the Cup. Hopefully I can do it again now that I'm on this team. Pat Nutty, back to you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Way to fight through. I know she's a little under the weather. But you can follow Tracy Myers, our Blackhawks insider, all season long on CSNChicago.com. And it's presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic. Click JeffVuk.com. That's ClickJeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Well, there's the aforementioned general manager of the Carolina Hurricanes, Hall of Famer Ronnie Francis. What a spectacular playing career he had. But... Uh, in his first year as the official GM of the Carolina Hurricanes. I want to mention some of the, we talked a little bit about the deals he made at the deadline. I think he did a heck of a job for his franchise. More on that in just a second. Here's Hosa working the boards. Now Tay, followed by Hainsey. Versteeg in deep. Bends it back to Chalmerson, who's unable to keep it in. Gross it all, has some skating room. Pass for Taze, right up the middle, great pass, he's in, he scored! What a pass from Michael Roosevelt to spring John of the Taze right up the gut, and he fired it by the glove of Ward, 1-0. But look at where the Carolina Hurricanes are here, Pat. They're outside the dots. So what does that do? That can make a pass into here. Perfectly executed. Jonathan Tate gets in behind. The width outside by the defenseman for the Carolina Hurricanes. And Jonathan Tate goes top shelf over the glove of Cam Ward. But that's one of those, that's like, that's like a goal route in football, where Roosevelt sees that open ice, Tate gets in behind Jordan Stahl, and it's a timing play. If it's too late, he's offside. If it's too early, might be an icing. But just the timing on it was perfectly executed, but all that room in the middle of the ice was opened up because the defenseman hit spread out. But what a shot, what a release, quick little wrister, and Michael Roosevelt with a beautiful assist. So 20 goals now for the Hawks captain, and four of them in the last five games. This puck bounce right to Ward, is able to hang on. We'll take another look at the goal. Look at how much room there is in the middle of the ice there, Pat. I mean, that, that's, I mean that, that's just too much room for anybody, let alone a guy like Jonathan Taves did a great job there receiving that puck. Jordan Stahl, I mean, he, he was in the area, but it was how hard the pass was. Taves was able to stay on side, most importantly, and then shoot that puck. Caught Cam Ward in between. All right now along the boards, Brad Malone could not get it out. Seabrook comes this way, teaming him, brings it around. Sharp centered at Saad, shot is blocked. Now Vermette left it for Timonen. And then it bounces back to center ice. Antoine Vermette, been wearing number 50 throughout his NHL career. Of course, that's that's taken there in Chicago. The guy standing in the blue paint. 
Been wearing that for the Blackhawks. So Vermette chose to go with number 80. Tiemannen jostling in behind. Vermette jammed it loose to Seabrook. Cleared it rink wide. Bickle, he steams into the zone. Got to the middle. Checked before he could pull the trigger. Good work fall for Carolina. Now it's going to be held in by Runway. Hot pass for Richards. A shot hit the side of the net. He shot it outside the near post. Richards sent it. Oh, and it just bounced over the stick of Taravina. A couple of good opportunities for Brad. Richards looking for a goal after going 20 in a row without lighting the lamp himself. Beautiful pass there from Rundle. I think Richards was surprised, Pat, at how wide open he was and then how much time he had. One thing I'm noticing with Cam Ward, he's very deep in his net, especially when shots are being attempted. He's not on top of the blue paint. He's very deep in his net. The Blackhawks can go to school on here. Now Belmar will send it in there. Most of all, hacked it off the glass. It bounced out to center. The Canes' captain Eric Stahl giving ground. Belmar goes up the boards and winds up back with Roosevelt. Taves sending it in. Justin Falk dropped it up the boards and Seven goes back to Eric Stahl. Alexander Seven rolled it into the Chicago end. Falk, who's their leading scorer, stripped of it beautifully by Seabrook. Justin Falk, the young D-man, has three more points than anybody on his team. That play is offside. As we come to the halfway point of the uh, first period. And Jonathan Tay's 20th goal of the year. As the Hawks in front, a great pass to Springham for Roosevelt. Well, welcome back to the United Center and our uh, Hyundai, what to look for. We've got Michael Jordan on the right, and we got Mikhail Jordan on the left. Wait a minute now, Michael Jordan, the third pick in 1984. Nicknames. That sounds familiar. <laughs> the guy who's laughing was uh, drafted the same number then. And then Mikhail Jordan, talking to uh, Bill Peters, the terrific young coach of the Hurricanes. And uh, he said, wow, I, he's been an assistant in Detroit the last couple of years. He said, I thought I was going to get a chance to coach not only Nick Lindstrom, but Michael Jordan. <laughs> and he found out the kid pronounced his name differently. And uh, assistant coach Steve Smith was there. And of course, as you saw, he's from the Czech Republic. So the coaches were asking Jordan, did his parents have any idea about the name they'd given him? And, he kind of looked for the blank stare. I guess I guess the basketball player wasn't very much a big deal in the Czech Republic when he was born. They, they had no idea that there was some famous, semi-famous athlete with the same name. Nice pass there by Vermet to Keith as he exited the zone. Vermet needs help from Keith here. A run blast, a ring around. Vermet leaves it on the board, Sharp missed it, and the Canes come out, McClement bounced it out over the stick of Gerby, rolling all the way to Comfort for a whistle. Well, fans, don't miss your chance to catch all the exciting Blackhawks action from in between the player benches. Go down the CME Group Seats through the online CME Group Seats auction. For more information, visit chicagoblackhawks.com. That's the rookie head coach, rookie head coach uh, for the Hurricanes, Bill Peters. For the last three years was an assistant in Detroit working with the Mike Babcock. Before that, he was with the Hawks organization for three years and did a terrific job as the head coach of the Rockford Ice Hogs. Made the playoff two out of the three seasons he was there. And before that, he was a head coach in junior hockey and won the Memorial Cup with the Spokane in 08. Terrific hockey guy and a even better human being. Yeah, he's done, he'll a, he's done a wonderful job and getting a great chance. Uh, Talking to some of the uh, Hurricane people. I mean, he's very demanding yeah. and of himself more than anybody else. So he's certainly not going to ask anybody to do something that he doesn't do as well. And uh, it is a rebuild in Carolina. First year coach, first year general manager. 
We showed you they traded a bunch of assets at the deadline or just before it to acquire some draft picks and so forth. And uh, they're trying to get things retooled in Carolina. But this is, accountability is a big word with uh, Bill Peters. And so the Hurricanes are uh, really excited about what he has brought to their organization in terms of all the young guys they're already dressing. And then trying to learn to play the right way. Now Taves. Across for Runblad. Able to hang on in traffic. Versteeg to pass full behind him. Taken away by the Canes Falk. And Eric Stahl checked by Runblad at the line. Might catch him in a change. Versteeg couldn't quite catch up with a loose puck though. Rumbley did a good job there, Pat, of not only shutting off the Carolina Hurricanes on that three-on-two, but the pass he stopped, but it became a two-on-one awfully quickly. Darabinen coming out. Fickle for Darabinen in the corner. Helped out by Richard. Back door is Tiemann trying to join the play, but Richard's pass didn't find him. Alver Steve. And a knock away. Kane rush jammed up. Good stick by Tiemann. Richards the other way. And Richards hanging on. Well, the Hurricanes able to get it back, and Belmore rolled it to center. In for Gerby. Whiffed on a pass attempt. Back of the goal it goes, and trickle back out in front. They couldn't get a shot to the net. Here's Falk keeping it in. His long blast missed the target. Centering pass hit a skate. Cleared in behind Gerby. He leaves it there. McClement for Carolina. Hit it in behind the net. Chris Terry. Now left to McClement. He drives. The puck rolled away from him to Crawford, who covers it up. Five minutes remaining. In the opening period, 1-0 Chicago. Well, time now for our Kia drive to the net, and Blackhawks assistant coach Kevin Deneen has a tie to this franchise and a franchise that it was before they got to Carolina. Look, he scored the final goal in Hartford Whaler history back in 97, and then he scored the first goal in Carolina Hurricane history. That was a Greensboro, right, partner? That's where yeah. they played the first yep. little while there, and there's a good look at Kevin Deneen. A hard guy to play against. Every night. The word character is yeah. almost always yeah. used when you talk about Kevin Deneen as a player. And as a coach, he's been yeah. a terrific ad to uh, Coach Q's group. Seven. Look out the Hawks bench as a puck deflected up over the boards. Hey, Patty, a quick birthday shout-out to uh, Juliana Canena. Member of the ice crew here for the Blackhawks. And want to wish her a belated happy birthday and say hi to her dad, John, and her mom, Connie. And her brother, Vince. Big, big Blackhawk fans. If they were in the uh, need of travel, they just get a hold of John Canetta over at Venus Travel. Take good care of you. We want a little warm weather at this time of year. Sharp got checked as he got to the line. Falk moved it out to center. Now uh, Nestrasil couldn't get any further than the line. A loose puck reach. Oh, Sharp could have had it. It just jumped over his blade. Then he gets it back for Bermette to Sharp. Cutting it center. Stick him side, couldn't quite tip it home. Good stick there by Vermette to keep that play alive after the puck was bouncing all around. And Sharp got a little bit of chemistry there, Pat, just working off of one another. It's the second time they've had a nice little play in the offensive zone. Nothing to show for it, but give Carolina credit there. Falk did a good job, as you mentioned, coming back on Brandon's side, back door. They're going to be icing Canes. Go back to that last chance for the Hawks. There's that little play. Give and go for Met to Sharp. Right part of your screen right there. Justin Falk comes all the way back. Does a nice job. 
put a little bit of pressure, a little bit of heat on Brandon Saad. See what Cam Ward is there, Pat, on that replay? Yes, I mean, yeah. he just, just seems like his, almost, his skates are almost on, on the goal line. You know he's protecting that post there, but... Close call. We talk about the line groupings for uh, the Hawks here in the opening period, and we show the plan of Saad with an attempted setup from Vermette and Sharp. I think you got to go back to three weeks into the season. Maybe the last time that Saad did not start a game with Taves and Hosa. So, well, the Hawks additions. Coach Q uh, making a few changes on especially that group. I don't think there's a group that's been touched less uh, when Coach Q jumbles things up. And that connection of uh, Taves, Hosa, and Saad, but uh, they are not together to start the game tonight. Bickle retrieving a loose puck. They have a centering pass. Carolina couldn't quite get any one on it. Taken by Keith. Centered it. Here's Richards. Oh, boy, had a good opportunity and couldn't get the puck under clean control. Cost him a shooting chance from a, the middle of the ice. Well, Jacqueline had a collision there with Table Tara Vinen. Right there, he loses his balance, gets pushed a little bit, and this puck goes. I mean, just right in between the blade and the skate of Table Tara Vinen. Look, you keep going to that area, Pat, and we talk about it all the time. You keep going to that area, you're going to get rewarded. You're going to draw somebody to you, you might draw a penalty. You're going to give yourself an opportunity to score a goal. And, there's a price to pay to score goals. And that's the area you got to go to. Chris for Steve. Able to get the hunt, but was knocked down by Jordan Stahl. They come back the other way. Salmon couldn't reach it. And that's going to be an offside play at the Hawks line. We talked about the uh, selling of the Carolina Hurricanes near the trade deadline, and there's the GM, Ron Francis, who I thought really did a great job for his franchise, and the, the biggest deal he made was trading Sakara, the D-man, who was going to leave there, and with the team in L.A. in desperate straits, Voinoff's not going to be able to come back to them, it looks like, so he had the defenseman much coveted by the L.A. Kings. Not only did he get a highly regarded prospect, but he got a first-round draft choice. Everybody was shocked that he was able to get a number one as part of that deal. And when the deal was made, I can tell you, every general manager that was a seller said, yippee. And every general manager that was a buyer said, oh, no. The well, prices all just went up. Because that was really the first big deal before the, uh, the uh, finale of the trade deadline today. But that was the first big one that was made. And Francis got a... Uh, it was a great get for his franchise, but in doing that, well, like, like an officiating call, I guess. Half the people are mad at you and half the people love you. <laughs> 70 seconds to go in the first. Chalmerson. Nordstrom got it deep. Skinner back. One minute remaining in the period. One minute. Now Shaw, touch pass for Nordstrom, oh, and he couldn't pull the trigger, trying to make one last move, and uh, denied by a good stick from Hillen. Jalmerson looks ahead to Kruger. Marcus Kruger pulls up, try to shot the tip, and a good save by Ward on a Shaw redirect. And the Hurricanes now... Try to start back. Riley Nash hasn't scored a goal in 16 games. Drops it back and that pass remains. He just knocked Jordan Stahl right down. Here's Falk. Lead was tipped. Chased down by seven. He turns and shoots. That's blocked out in front. And a penalty, a penalty on the broken stick. There was a slash. Seven, maybe? And, uh, or is it Seabrook? Paul Dvorsky at the end of the first period. 
will give a, a slashing violation. I think it's going to be on Seabrook. Uh, his stick broke as Alexander Semin was coming to the front of the net, and Brent Seabrook's going to need a uh, choice there, and there's Troy Parchman. Uh, I didn't like any of those there, so he's going to get a new one in the intermission, and uh, looks like Carolina's going to have a power play to start. Well, they need one. The Hurricanes had only four shots on goal in the opening 20 minutes. The Blackhawks had seven. And uh, the only goal coming on a sweet passing play for the Hawks. Roosevelt able to spring Jonathan Taves for that shot. Up over the glove of Cam Ward, his 20th, as the Hawks in front. Blackhawks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Visit buyhyundai.com. BMO Harris Bank. We're here to help. Ford, who invites you to visit your local Ford store or localfordstores.com. Corona Extra. Find your beach. And by Kia. Visit mykiachicago.com to learn more. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois has teamed up with the Blackhawks and moved two lucky fans closer to the action as part of tonight's Blue Seat Upgrade Experience. Don't forget to bring your Blue Cross and Blue Shield card for your chance to win. Blue Cross through it all. And congratulations to tonight's winners. Welcome back inside the United Center. The Blackhawks with a 1-0 lead over the Carolina Hurricanes. And time now for our Illinois Lottery. Hawks fans, text lottery to Beehawks now for a chance to win two tickets to a Blackhawks home game and ride the Zamboni courtesy of the Illinois Lottery. That's lottery to 242-957. And be sure to watch the drawing in the second period of tonight's game. I think they might be texting right now, partner. Look at <laughs> Never seen so happy to text 242-957. <laughs> Way hey, Eddie DT. texted me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the flip phone still works, partner. Yeah, partner. Or would have been it would have been Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so a fresh sheet of ice for the uh, Carolina power play for that reason. Let's see, at the end of the period, hacking a stick, and uh, the Hurricanes will get the. Game's first power play. They've scored four goals their last three games. They're four out of the last 11, the uh, Carolina power play. The Blackhawks PK after leading the league all season long for the first 50 games or so. Now, they've had some hard times. Six goals in the last five games have been converted on. Uh, converted on the Hawks' uh, PK. Six out of 17 have been finished by the opponents and so the Canes get their first tonight and the second period is brought to you by Chevy and Chevy drives Chicago.com Fall brings it around Homerson shifted loose and attacked back the other way by Kruger well, with the departure of Ben Smith that number one unit up front with the forward rotation with Marcus Kruger Nordstrom is, uh, looks like he's got that spot to start. Oh, Nordstrom and Kruger began. Now it's Taves and Hosa out there. Hosa picked up a loose puck. Go ahead! He followed up there goes Taves. Here's the pass. He's in again. Taves! He scores! A short-handed goal for Jonathan Taves. Sprung this time by Duncan Keith. And it's 2 nothing. Well, what a beautiful pass, Pat, as you mentioned by Duncan Keith. First breakaway in the first period. Taves goes top shelf. What a pass up and over the stick. And then Jonathan Taves goes right between the wickets. Look at that puck on edge. Little bit of air. Taves settles it down and looks like it was on edge just a little bit when Jonathan Taves put it through between the legs of Cam Ward. But a shorthanded goal and the Hawks up two. Jordan Stahl gets the line, rings it around. Seven on the other side, dropped it to Skinner. Tees it up and put it across. Here's a shot from Jordan, kicked away by Crawford. 
Puck loose to Skinner, trickled it toward the middle, and Crawford there to capture. Take another look at the goal. Look at that puck on edge, Pat. Duncan Keats got it on his stick. Up and over the stick of Nestor Schill. And then here comes Jonathan Taves. Gets his puck, settles it down, and fires it right between the legs. Alongside Jordan, picked away by Crawford. And the Hawks able to get it back the other way. Half a minute remaining on the Carolina power play. That Skinner able to get the line. He's got a four-game point streak entering the action tonight. This one's turned over to Nordstrom. Both teams changing. Mikhail Jordan. Into the hot zone. That's an offside play. Well, Pat, we talked about all the moves in the open tonight, and uh, general manager Stan Bowman awfully busy, and I'm sure he got extremely busy once they knew that Patrick Kane was going to be out for an extended period of time, and uh, can't emphasize enough the job that Stan and his staff has done here to bring in guys like Antoine Vermette and Kimo Timonen and Andrew Desjardins from the San, San Jose Sharks, and Everything changed. The, the plan changed, Pat, because all of a sudden they had a lot more cap space once Patrick Kane went on long-term injury. And it's an outstanding job by the Blackhawk general manager to wheel and deal. And, yeah, you gave up some draft picks. Sharp trying to cut in there. The puck just escaped. And now he goes crashing over the top of Ward. And a penalty coming up on Sharp. They both kind of reaching for a puck that had escaped. And... Uh, See Sharp checking with Ward to make sure he's okay in a sportsmanlike way. But he knows he's going to the box. Yeah, quick developing play. Patrick Sharp gets this on his stick, Pat, and the puck just takes off. And when you're struggling, those type of plays happen. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's been a battle for Patrick Sharp to create and generate offense, especially when it comes to the scoring part. It's been well documented, two five-on-five five goals all season long. He's got a breakaway, and the puck hits his stick and just takes right off. But his play has been better, Pat, as of late. He's going to the front of the net, he's generating, he's creating, and you have to think it's only a matter of time before he breaks out offensively. But that's what happens, though. You know, you got a breakaway, and the puck just jumps right off your stick when it's not going. That's just the way that it is. Back to the power play for the Canes. Here's a shot ball. Jumpers on the block. And Nordstrom able to trickle it out of there. I don't know if he's got a skate issue or not because he keeps looking down at his right skate. Nordstrom working hard to steal it. And the Canes able to get it back. Well, Nordstrom stays out there. Or, excuse me, Jalmerson stays out there. Here's a Kruger takeaway. Put it back to Tate. Well, great work by the first two four checkers, Kruger and Nordstrom. They're now off. And again, it's Taze and Hosa, who scored the last time they were in this scenario short-handed. Taze working the corner and jumped loose. Penalty, Chicago. As Hosa got his feet sort of, or his stick tangled up, and Nostrasel's skates. And now the Hawks are going to be two men short for 74. Gets the tip of the stick into the right skate and go back to that play by Nicholas Jalmerson. Yeah, hits him right in the right toe, right in the toe cap. Checking his skate blade, making sure it was still in place. Great pickup by our terrific crew. And now a five on three for a buck 14. So it's Kruger, Keith, Jalmerson trying to get through this problem. A face off win, Kruger. That'll take some time off the clock. Well, now the Kane. Wiles gets into the zone. Trying to get up the middle. He dropped it to seven. Touched it back. Now John Michael Wiles. Goes down low. Seven put it in front. Lyles across. Terry shot is blocked. And cleared out of the zone. Still 40 on the two-man advantage. 
Taves on Kruger off on the PK. There's a keep in by Seven who drives to the net. Hangs on. Falk across and got it back with a shot. Put it up over top of the goal. Harry tried to keep it and it rolled to Taves. Hey! Clears up the line. Well, Jalmerson's had to stay out. Everybody else has been able to change. Here come the Kane. They work it back. Here's a centering pass that winds up in the corner. Rass put it back. Jordan put it across the long shot. Ball full off covered. And he's able to locate. First penalty over. One man short for another 40. Well, nice job here by Corey Crawford. See Lindholm make a flyby there, Pat. Looking to cause some kind of a screen. Justin Falcon really drifted. And look at that puck deflected. That puck was deflected by Marcus Kruger. And you just never know how it dips and dives. And nobody in front of the net as that five on three expired. And with this stoppage, look who's still out there. Nick Jones has, still hasn't left the ice. Here's Nostrasso keeping it in. Now it's kicked over to the side. Here's a quick shot. Save. Caught the rebound. He dives. Trying to cover. Came loose. Robert thought he had that puck covered. It was uh, poke three underneath him. And Nick Jomerson alertly got it down the ice. One more rush here for the Canes with a one-man advantage. Falk into the zone, put himself offside for the whistle. Good positioning there by the official, Pat. Rob Martell, who got in behind, saw the puck was loose, and Hawks were able to clear. What a mad scramble in front of the net. Watch the right part of your screen. The official comes right in there. I mean, he had great positioning there. And the Hawks were able to clear it, and there, Jalmerson is <laughs> left. Able to clear it all the way down. Spectacular sequence for the Hawks, number four. Two men short for well over a minute, got through all of that, and then most of the remaining one man advantage time. That second penalty for the Hawks is over. Both teams were at full strength. Here's a turnover, McClellan. Put it in the corner. Now picked up by Terry. Goes back to Hainsey. His long shot never got to the net. Retrieved by Vermet. Able to clear it out. Jack Hillis. Steps into Chicago territory. And across the ice. Here's a wrist shot handled easily by Crawford. He juggled momentarily. But gets the whistle. Well, Friday, March 6th, when the Hawks take on the Edmonton Oilers, be one of the first 10,000 fans to enter the United Center, receive a Blackhawks sunglasses presented by the private bank. Visit chicagoblackhawks.com for ticket information. A happy birthday, Pat, to Jill Keelan Katz. Happy birthday today, and also Danielle Carpenter, 20 years of age today. Goes to school down at, uh, over at Ohio, uh, Iowa State, excuse me. A happy birthday to her. Throws it all, move it out. Vermette, the side. Now Jeff Skinner. Flipped it forward, picked up by Vermette. Oh, he turns it over, Skinner, the shot. Good save, Crawford. Antoine Vermette will think twice about backhanding to the middle of the ice after that one, but the Crawford bailed him out, and his team remains up two. Well, Blackhawk fans, get in the game. Register for your chance to win a two-year lease on a new Lexus. NX200T. Visit www.chicagoblackhawks.com forward slash Lexus for complete details. Two goals for Jonathan Taves in the game who will step in for a draw here against Jordan Stahl. Who actually was picked right ahead of Jonathan Taves the year they came out of the draft. Now 
Now a centering pass is uh, hacked at by the Canes. It didn't get through from Jordan. Here's his brother Eric trying to slam it out in front. Crawford blocked that. And Versteen put it out to Hosa. Back goes Hainsey for the Canes. And out they come. Falk in for Eric Stahl. He centered it. Here's a shot. Hainsey and a save made by Crawford. He fought it off. And into the corner goes Salmon. Has picked off Rosaval. Out for Hosa. Marion Hosa has 24 goals in 51 games against the Hurricanes in his career. Carolina now gets away. Gerby kicks it deep. Sunblad. Put it in behind. Now Keith able to win a board battle. And Richards cleared it loose. Here comes Runblad. Good pass. Shaw the shot. Or Terrible. I'm sorry. And uh, his shot deflecting out of play. A quick exit out of the zone. Defensive zone through the neutral zone and then Terravina with good support through the middle of the ice. Mike, uh, David Runblad with a nice pass and then a good stick by Carolina. Kel Jordan on that defensive play. Of course, since here at the United Center, it's Michael Jordan with a good defensive play. Good thing he's not number 23. <laughs> well, that would be something. <laughs> Hurricanes with a dump. Seabrook chasing. Aravine exiting to Richards. Bringing it around, hoping for Bickle, but Ward came out to play. Aravine back to Timonen. Bickle now is checked, fought it loose. There's Richards. Timonen paired it in behind. Bickle and Belmore get together there. The Canes get the puck. And out they come. John Michael Lyles with a wrist shot soaked up by Corey Crawford. Well, we talk about Stan Bowman being very busy over the course of the last couple of days, and he brings in soon to be 40 years of age, Kimo Timonen, short of 1,100 games in his career, and again, has not played a game in almost 10 months and had a chance to visit with him this morning, Pat. And it's a real character guy, a tremendous guy that will be a big asset to the Blackhawk organization, both on and off the ice. And you know, there's, a, there's timing issues, there's getting back into the swing of things, and it will be his greatest challenge, just getting up to speed. Sharp driving with a shot, goal post. He beat Ward, and boy, you said it earlier, Eddie, when it's going bad, those are the kind of things that happen. Could have had a breakaway earlier, the puck rolled free. There he had an open chance and beat the goalie, but it did go in. Yeah, left part of your screen, he gets in behind. Nice play there from Brandon Saad. Shoot in stride, goalie's going down, and he goes top shelf. Perfectly executed by Patrick Sharp. So again, goaltender's down, and I mean, it just hits the elbow there. I mean, it's a square right where the crossbar and post meet. So Sharp, now here's a shot by Jordan Stahl. He put it up high. And Keith coming away to Versteen. Hosa carries on. His shot. Good blocker from Ward. Just got a tiny piece. And the Canes to the counterattack. Eric Stahl pulling up. Where's the help? Hainsey tried to join him, but the pass missed. And ahead to Versteen. Has it on with a taste. Versteen, the shot is blocked. Great play, Hillen, for the Hurricanes. Jack Hillen gets it into Chicago ice. But Clement checked before he could make a pass. Jay McClement now tried to center, broken up by Teeman, and who went down to one knee. Gaines jam it loose, but a pass missing Hillen. They have to turn back. And Jordan goes up the board to steal side. Fights to the middle, then trying to shot. Jordan blocked it, but it's trying to score! The first block came right back to Brandon Saad. He tried again, found the back of the net, three nothing. Pat, the one thing that 
will kind of go under the radar is that Joe Quinville just double shifted this line. Yeah. They were out there before the Taves line. He comes right back with them, and look what ends up happening. Perfect persistency by Brandon Saad. He stays with that puck pad. But right before this, Sharp had the chance that went off the post. They made the change. Taves line comes out, and then Joe Quinville goes, you know what? This line's got it. It's creating. It's generating. Let's throw them back out there. Now, matchups certainly play a big part of that, and it's easier to do that when it's the second period because your bench is the closest to the offensive zone. But a heads-up play there, obviously, by Joe Quinville, and a great persistent play there from Brandon Saad. The four goals the last ten games now for Saad. He reaches the 20-goal plateau as his captain did earlier tonight. Keith unable to get it out. Here's the chance. Kirby blocker saved by Crawford. And the rebound to Shaw getting it back the other way. Now Kruger battles back in. Belmore took him off the puck. Shaw is checked. And it's poked loose to seven, and the Canes get out. Michael Rosaval. The Marion Hosa. And it'll be dumped into Carolina territory. Falk. He needs help on the boards. Eric Stahl. That turned around. A keep by Hosa. Battles to the middle. Now takes a look at the shot. Good save by Ward. As the Hawks, who have been regularly winning board battles, just did it again. Eric Stahl. Ran out of time. And it's cleared to center ice. And they've had great strength of supporting in the offensive zone. I mean, it's not many one on ones, but a lot of odd man situations. Seven shot into the glove of Crawford with eight and a half remaining in the second period. The Blackhawks had two goals from Jonathan Taze. Brandon Saad adds his 20th of the year. Well, there's David Rumblatt. You can come out to the Meyer store at 11305 Lincoln Highway out there in beautiful Mokina on Tuesday, March the 3rd. That's tomorrow from 4 to 6. David will participate in Meyer's Cooking with the Blackhawks and assist with cooking a healthy, delicious meal, as well as sign autographs for attendees. Visit ChicagoBlackhawks.com for more information. Well, you can ask him about his cooking prowess. You can ask him about his plus 16. He's the second best plus minus mark on the team. Only Taves has a better number on the Chicago squad. Kruger looks to center just out of the reach of Nordstrom. Shaw trying to spin out of the corner. Left it for Kruger. Shaw has a Kruger out in front. Oh, good block of the pass by Lindholm. Otherwise, uh, Marcus Kruger had the goalie one on one. Emo Timonen with a pass to the feet of Bickle. Bickle finding Richards, who steps into the zone. Hey, Tara Bynum trying to move to the net, but the Richards shot deflects out of play. Talking about uh, Kimo team and Eddie, of course, you mentioned his first game and seemingly forever tonight. Talking with the Coach Q before the game about how much ice time he may get, and he's going to keep very close tabs on him, and he basically said, He'll let us know by sure. what he says on the bench, but also just the way he's playing and how the uh, how his wind, how his legs are holding up, because you talked about it a lot. You can simulate and work out and practice all you want, but there's nothing like the scenario of a playing in a game and actually playing against folks who have bad intentions. So it just changes the entire dynamic of... Uh, what practice might bring you, and we talk about it all the time. Yeah, we worked hard trying to get ready to play again after an injury or whatnot, but 
There's no substitute for actually playing in a game. Here's a chance for the Keys. Oh, a fired shot from Malone missed the net. And some of their better chances yeah. tonight, they've not hit the target, Carolina. Yeah, the fourth line's been pretty effective. Paravine on the other way, Senator Richard, shooting, caught off by Ward, it's loose, and captured by the Canes. Oh, I love where Bickle is, Patty, he's right on his backside there in front of the net, going hard to the net. Beautiful execution through the middle of the ice after a great chance for Malone at one end. The Hawks come back in an odd man situation, but I love where Brian Bickle goes on his play. Stop it right here. Look at Brian Bickle. I mean, from our Xfinity Telestrator, right? Puck is getting moved back to Brad Richards, 91 in red. Look at Bickle. Stops right in front of the net. Almost knocks that puck out of midair. And you go to that area of the ice, you're going to get some attention. So Brian Bickle, I think, Pat, we, I think we would agree. I mean, his ice time numbers have not been where he probably would like them. But I think he's had an impact on the games with the physical part. Doing those little things, and you keep going to those areas, you're going to get rewarded. And you'd love to see Brian Bickle using that big body going to the front of the net. Now here's Burbett. We'll stop and go a move, put it across to Sharp. We touched it back. Thomason's flip shot goes wide to Rosaball. He's going to look to Vermette. Antoine Vermette, his first game of the Hawk. That pass picked off by Falk, and the Canes are going to get out. Coming slowly into the zone. Got a long shot that never had a chance to get into the goal. Alexander Salmon, two goals, 12 assists so far this year for the Carolina Hurricanes. Making. Oh boy, well, I mean, when you talk seven. underachieving, that, uh, he's the poster boy. Aaron Cole, the former general manager, Jimmy Rutherford, signed him to a four-year extension, and now Jimmy Rutherford wheeling and dealing for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Boy, he's been really active. Boy, talking about a team that's made a lot of changes there. And them and Anaheim have made a lot of changes, but Alexander Simmons uh, on the books for the next couple of years for Carolina. Justin Falk, Mitchell, he's their leading scorer. This pass deflecting up into the air. Hosa got it. And now Falk uh, able to clear it to center. Okay, this kid's are 22 years old. Talking with the GM Ronnie Francis about guys that'll be part of the core in Carolina here. A couple years down the road, he's one of the first names that was mentioned. And that's what he's there. Uh, there's leading. Their leading scorer. There's a couple of other defensemen who lead their teams. Carlson leads Ottawa in scoring. Ekman Larson leads Arizona in scoring. And Calgary is. Uh... Oh, this is, what, what do we have? Oh, a whistle. Sorry. Four and a half to go. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a second. Three low. Time now for our GMC professional grade saves. Not a lot of quality looks on Corey Crawford, but a couple of good ones were on that five on three and five on four power play for Carolina here in the second period. And talking about watching the ball in your mitt and baseball partner. You gotta do the same thing when you're a goaltender, watching that puck right into the glove. Hill in the long flip shot tip, but a good save by Crawford on a redirect. Riley Nash had his pocket picked by Duncan Key. Oh. Now a bouncing puck for Shaw. The shot, Lord, does everybody score? Jammed into the goal by Marcus Kruger, who gets his second goal in 31 games. But uh, as Eddie said earlier, go to the front of the net, good things happen. Hawks up four. Carolina has this puck right here on the boards. I think it's Jordan. But watch the stick right here of Marcus Kruger. He gets it, and he deflects it. And the quick shot by Shaw, and 
Just like we talked about Brian Bickle, Pat, going hard to the net, you might get one of these. I mean, this is a freebie. But it's only a freebie because you have the walk to and the willingness to get to the front of the net. Kruger makes the play in the middle of the ice. And the Hawks have their fourth goal of the game. I think Shaw was shot, Pat. Yeah. Here's Hosa. He's got a two-on-one shooting goal. Goes right up for Steve. And that shot seemed to be blocked. So the Hurricanes giving up chances regularly now. Here's Roosevelt keeping it in. Roosevelt's pass picked off. Hainsey the other way. Put it to Eric Stahl. His pass hit escape. And Hosha feeds for Steve. He steps into the zone. His wrist shot blockered away by Ward. And it's out of play. Oh, yeah, Jordan Stahl going uh, fencing a little bit with, with Hosa. And then now Eric Stahl comes into the pile. He gets involved with Hosa. Well, a two-on-one. Quick transition. Taves, beautiful move. Carolina steps up, and Hosa shoots back the other way. As Cam Ward goes down, and as you mentioned, Pat Christopher Steve comes in contact with that puck and comes awfully close. But I want to go back to the goal by Kruger. I think Shaw really was, I think he was looking to give the puck back to Kruger, Pat, because he got it, and he looked to his left to see where Kruger was, and then he finally said, okay, the radar went off, the bell went off, just get it to the net, and that's exactly what he did. Well, in most cases, when you get the puck in that area, he's right between the circles. you got to figure you're going to exactly. be covered. It's going to yeah. be hard to get a shot yeah. to the goal, and like you said, all of a sudden you realize, oh, man, there's nobody around. This is beautiful. Pickle and I stick left to uh, steal and clear. This fourth line for uh, Carolina has been their best line. That's a good shift. So generated a couple of quality chances in this game. Your Carolina, obviously, that's not a good thing. Your fourth line is your best yeah. offensive line. The Kings have been able to get the puck to the Hawks net several times, actually pretty regularly here in the second period, but well, there could have been a chance, but a good breakup of a pass leads to the Hawks' counterattack. Picked up by Vermette, but it escaped him, and Gerby cleared it the other way. Ross Nestor's still shot gave block. Comes back to him. And Seabrook. Steps into the zone with a wrister that's off a leg to Nathan Kirby. But uh, you mentioned earlier, Eddie, I mean, they've got 13 shots in the period, Carolina. But some of the better chances they've had have failed to hit the net. Oh, Hainsey put it right to the doorstep of his own net, but... He's a paid professional, so <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> you said it the other day. Good save by Comfort. Rebound deflected just wide of the Hogs' goal. That's usually one you don't want to try, you young hockey players. <laughs> in your own zone, pass it through the blue paint. But as my great Hall of Fame partner just mentioned, it's paid a lot of money to make those decisions. <laughs> well, the heart rate goes up a little bit if you're the coach stand behind the bench. Back in my days in Pittsburgh, partner coaching, they had a few defensemen that were probably had a better chance of carrying in the carry the puck in a pail, let alone handling with a stick. So heart rate went up quite a bit. I do remember when you got that job, you had all your hair. <laughs> hey, take it easy. Well, Come on now. You, st you still have most yeah, well, of it. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. yeah. So, as long as I don't hang up, I don't hang my hair up on my pants. I'll be okay. Here's a starting pass to Versteeg, who ripped it wide. Half a minute left in the period. That's why my shoes are awfully shiny. The shoe polish helps out every once in a while. <laughs> learn, that from, learn that from Tony O. <laughs> your hair and your shoes done at the same place? <laughs> the period, thankfully, is over. I want to go get a shot. <laughs>
<laughs> well, the Blackhawks, uh, while we were commiserating, had 11 shots on goal. Three went in. The uh, Carolina Hurricanes had 14 shots. Nothing went in. 18 shots both ways through two. Tave scored a short-handed goal to start things off in the second period. Then Brandon Saad picking up his own rebound. Snapped home his 20th. And Marcus Kruger following it up at Andrew Shaw. Shot scored his sixth. A three-goal period as the Hawks with a big lead. Black Hawks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. AT&T U-verse high speed internet. The U-verse revolves around you. And by First Midwest Bank, the bank with momentum. Learn more at firstmidwest.com today. Welcome back to the greatest city in the world downtown. The Blackhawks on Madison Street have a four-goal lead getting ready for the third period. Proceeding that, we talked with assistant coach Kevin Neen brought to us tonight by Acura. Is it fair to say, Kev, this morning it just felt like an energy and electricity around the room? General Manager Stan Bowman didn't tinker. He went for it. Quite a message sent. I think so. I think that resonates uh, strongly in the locker room. I think... Uh, the quality of people we brought into our locker room really makes a big difference. Veteran players that have been around for a while, played some good hockey, and uh, uh, exactly what we expect out of them. I think this is maybe a little relief for some uh, uh, players on both benches. Whatever it is, we're by it. Now we're back. We got our group, and off we go. Hey, Kev, crash course on systems and all that kind of stuff for even the uh, you know the veteran guys yeah. you've brought in. Yeah, well, uh, we, we've got a little uh, a video packet that we walk sure. our new players from. They get a taste of how we play the game. At the end of it, Eddie, uh, I think as you know, you, you get a lot of information in a short time span. The real message, go out and play, do what you do well, and uh, good things will follow. Well, most importantly, you have a tie to this franchise that you're playing here tonight. Yeah. You scored the last goal in Hartford yep. Whaler history, and you scored the first goal yeah, long, for Carolina. Long was ago. it coast to coast, forehand, backhand, uh, roof shot, or what? <laughs> I think I was at that stage of my career. There might have been a few off my bum or my skates, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, anyways, we'll take them. Nice to get uh, uh, a nice uh, uh, cushy lead here, but we got to uh, play the right way like we have tonight, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll enjoy it after. <laughs> I can't appreciate Thanks, it. Appreciate the it. old Whaler and Hurricane. <laughs> Kevin Deneen and the uh, current Black Black Hawk, who does a terrific job. Uh, Coach Q staff. And this third period is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Jonathan Taves. A step into the offensive zone. Host of the net. The rink wide picked off. Jordan stalled trigger to head Eric. Trying to get away from a couple of checkers. Not happening. And here's Taves. Here's Taves into the... Carolina's own left it for Hosa, whose shot is sticked away by Ward. And the Hurricanes fault will dump it in. Keith up the board. Nice touch pass from Saad. Here comes Sharp into the end. A backhand pass just out of the reach of uh, Aravon, who was driving up the middle. Well, back come the Hurricanes. Pass across. Here's a long shot deflecting wide. And lines up back at center. Well, the Canes get it back into the hog zone. Pass deflects back the other way. Well, he corrects something I said. The guy coming out of the net who had thoughts of playing the puck. They can back up Udoman. They've uh, taken Cam Ward out. And Anton Udoman gets third period work here for Coach Bill Peters. Comes off a shutout in his last game. Chance for the Canes. A shot. And a good blocker from Crawford on Nash. Rebound to Nordstrom. And then Kruger back to Joachim Nordstrom. And it jumped over his stick. Skinner 
Coming off a 33-goal year last season. Best uh, year he's ever had in the NHL goal-scoring-wise. He's red hot entering play tonight. Had six goals his last nine games. And a wrist shot handled by Udobin. Who will cover it up. Well, Wednesday night, join CSN Chicago's Pat Boyle and radio personality Eric Ferguson. Where's Kathy? As they host the Comcast Sportsnet Sports Award presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Watch the live ceremony at 7.30. For more info, visit csnchicago.com slash sports awards. Eric Ferguson, a huge Blackhawk fan. Here's a chance for Terabina with a shot. Udobin made the save. T Tebow gets it back, looking to center. Pass deflected. Udobin was looking for it. We didn't know where that was. Here's a long shot. Richards. Oh, Udobin fought that off in traffic. Terabina battling to the middle. Looking for help from Bickle and Terabina right to the net. Then Richards. Center to Keith. Oh, he tried to get Terabina to goal at the far post. A little too hard of hot pass from Duncan Keith. Now Keith keeping it in. A long clip shot. Broken up. Hainsey. And finally the Canes get it out of their own end. Crawford trying to catch him in a change. Richard's going to try a long one. Udelman a stand-up blocker save. Now the Canes get into the Chicago end. Hill and put it across. The pass broken up. Two Taves and now taken by Falk for Carolina. Seven, and that's an offside play. Well, a good shift there for the Richards-Pickle Caravine in line from our WeatherTech Robo Camp. Here you see the hot, hard pass there from Duncan Keith looking for table to the left of Anton Hudobin. Good read, too, there by uh, Duncan Keith to jump into that open area. That second and third wave. Taze into the zone. Here's for Steve. Look at the center. Hudobin broke up the pass on a shot. The save by Hudobin on Hosa, who had the puck find him. Salmon able to get it out of there. Blackhawks in this period. They've had eight, excuse me, seven shots on goal. The Canes have had one. They might get two. Nostrasso sent an open net. They score a nice pass. Nostrasso gave a tap in to uh, the D-man Lyles and Caroline on the board. No, John Michael Lyles. Has a wide open net after the Carolina Hurricanes turned this three on three into a four on three. The beautiful pass over, and Miles has nothing but the empty net, and Nestor has the presence of mind to be able to move that puck all the way over. That patience, and you see the reaction from Miles there, acknowledging the tremendous pass there. And Carolina is on the board. Chase it down, a loose puck. And now the Canes look to start back. Derby against Seabrook. Timonen checked in the corner. Nathan Derby. Big back, Belmore. Nestor Shell rolled it back. Here's Haynesy with a chance. His long shot just missed the far post. Now the Canes. A dumping attempt floats up off the netting and the whistle. Well, Wednesday night on NBCSN. Wednesday night rivalry will be the New York Rangers and the Detroit Red Wings at 7 o'clock. Both teams 
pretty active at the trade deadline. The New York Rangers picking up uh, Keith Yandel from the Arizona Coyotes. Also picking up uh, James Shepard, too, from the San Jose Sharks. And the Detroit Red Wings bringing in, I think, a very good pickup in Eric Zidlitsky. Also Eric Cole from the uh, Dallas Stars. So uh, a big game with two teams that have a legitimate chance to come out of the Eastern Conference and uh, get to the Stanley Cup Final. I mean, the Rangers have been playing without Henry Lundqvist back for the last couple of weeks. Seems like forever, yeah. yeah but, uh, Couple interesting moves by uh, both teams. Kruger's flip shot is blocked. Shaw looks to center. That's picked off. Now Keith looking for Bickle. And Richards bounced it forward. Vermette. Check to the ward. And now the Canes from their own end. Speaking of the Rangers, Pat, the, uh, they played tonight. They beat Nashville four to one. Nashville's lost a couple in a row now. Come back down to uh, back down to earth a little bit after being on such an incredible run. Seen that a lot, right? When you're on a run, you gotta you gotta stay with it. I mean, look at LA. What they won nine in a row, Pat, and then now yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, now they lost three in a row. <laughs> oh, big hit! Good uh, check by Terry. It was a knockdown, Roosevelt, but the play continues. However, it's offside. Tensional offside, partner. Yep, they'll bring the draw all the way back down to Kudobin's end. Seven minutes into the third. Well, time now for our first Midwest Bank fan camp. What are the chances we've got some soft serve ice cream in this shot, partner? I think it's a pretty good chance. Uh, can I go 100%? <laughs> well, happy birthday. Uh-oh. No, we oh, did not. Oh, my goodness. The crew. Bulldog. They pulled a snack. They pulled a fast one on us. There is some skullduggery going on in the truck. <laughs> Hosa, put it ahead. Versteeg gets the line. The ball, who's been out there a lot, made a nice defensive play, and... The Hurricanes, Jordan Stahl with a chip and chase. But the Hawks start right back. Taves looking to Hosa. Stepping into the zone. Taves to the net. Hosa shot. He scores! Miriam Hosa snapped it in for his eighth goal the last 12 starts. And it's 5-1. Well, the left-handed shot, Marion Hosa coming down the right wing boards, Pat. Shoots his puck right between the legs of Mikhail Jordan. Uses the defender as a screen. Quick little release. Left-handed shot coming down the right wing boards and fires it right between the legs of the Carolina defender. Eighteen goals for Hosa. And the Hawks a commanding lead over Carolina, a team that actually had beaten Chicago the last 14 times these franchises have met. Carolina had nine wins. And the Hawks won the two games last year, but you go back a few years, the Hurricanes have done pretty well against the Hawks. Not the story tonight. Number 32, Michael Roosevelt at 7.55. Flag on Roll of season this season. Scored by Kessa. Assisted by Keynes and Roosevelt at 7.55. That's the Keynes. They'll clear it back to center. Keynes, he's going to give some ground. Put it to Belmore. 
That pass didn't work, but icing is saved by Carolina and Rumblad. His pass tip held in. Hainsey and find a lane. Belmore will try. Missed the net. Picked up by Shaw. Will they work along the boards? You hear the referee saying, move it. Not going to blow the whistle. And of course, hardly ever happens these days to get a stoppage with a board battle. This puck is covered by Hudobin, and after a little skirmishing on that uh, during the board battle, temper is slightly short. Ben, I want to go back to the uh, goal by Marion Hosa. Talked about him being a left-handed shot, trying to get this puck to this area of the ice, but watch this area of the ice right between the legs there of Mikel Jordan. Skate to the left. Stick is out. I mean, as the stick goes out, he just fires it right through the leg of the defenseman. And that's goal number 482 in the Hall of Fame career of Marion Hosa. So, quick little math. 18 away from the unbelievable mark of 500 goals. And, and that was just a perfectly executed shot by Marion Hosa. And we mentioned this earlier, but that's his 25th goal against the Carolina slash Hartford franchise. 25 goals in 52 games he's played against them, so usually likes seeing them on the schedule. This is icing canes. Face-off back to the left of Hudobin. Speaking of that uh, magic number 500, the guy who started the game tonight for Carolina, Cam Ward, reached that milestone as a goalie last week. And they had a big ceremony for him, and rightly so, the former Tom Smythe trophy winner in the uh, 06 playoffs when he led the Hurricane to the Stanley Cup, but when he reached the uh, magic number of 500 games as a Hurricane, there's only 63 other goalies that have ever played that many NHL games, so uh, what a milestone for him to reach. So this, uh, in game number uh, 502, I'm not sure he'll uh, have fond memories. I don't think he got a lot of help tonight either, but... No, no, I mean, this, here's a chance for Carolina Seven, the open net, he had Crawford down, and then nothing happened. Couldn't tell, Pat, but from this vantage point, looked like the puck rolled on Seven, and I think that's why he waited, and then by that time, Crawford was able to recover, and then just made too hard of a pass there. Jordan Stall was wide open in the slot area. Hosa cuts back in. Pass was out of the reach of Versteeg. Eric Stahl to Alexander Simon. Stand still, Rister. Picked up by Vermette. Now Sharp hits the line. Check line at Mestrasil and the Hurricanes Rask. Got it out. Sharp trying to move back in. That's an offside play. And a whistle with eight minutes remaining. A 5-1 Chicago lead. Check replay and Patrick Sharp on. Brett Belmore. Play was offside, but he gives Sharpie that hit on the uh, stat sheet. Post tonight. Had a breakaway and the puck just slid off his stick. As I mentioned earlier, Pat, I think he's the, you know he's got some chemistry with uh, with Antoine Vermette. Oh, 
kind of look at it and watch how he kind of reacts in certain areas of the ice. But they seem to have had a couple of real nice give and goes. Yep. Uh, which is certainly a, uh, a good sign there as one of the players can learn to work off each other. And it takes some time, whether it's Kimo Tiemann on the back end or Antoine Vermet up front. Well, let me ask you as a guy who did get traded yep. during your career, I mean, yep. Even though they're veteran players, how long does it take to get fully comfortable with a new set of line mates or a new D partner? Yeah, I mean, I think Pat always kind of felt took me, you know, a good seven to ten games. So that's, I mean, do the math. I mean, it could be three weeks, really, yeah. depending on how your schedule is. But I mean, even more challenging for a guy like Kimo Timonen, whose family is back in Philadelphia wife and three children and uh, certainly looking forward to getting them here to Chicago at some point kids are in school uh, but you know for a guy like team and it's going to be that timing aspect get in the game condition as you mentioned a little bit earlier Pat you can practice and train all you want but uh, nothing like the repetition of playing games but uh, you know for me it you know system wise and you know, learning your teammates and everything else it's going to take some time well, it, they happen to join the Hawks at a time that they're not very busy. You don't play tonight, you don't play it again until Friday. Then there's a game Sunday, and then you don't play again until the tail end of next week. I mean, they play three games in nine days, so there certainly be a lot of uh, chance for practice reps, but we said earlier, there's nothing like actual game competition to, you know, try to get things solidified, get the timing. In a real life game scenario. Well, it may take a little time, but both the Wiley veterans were very experienced playoff performers. We talked about Dino Team and getting to the finals a couple of years ago. Antoine Vermette has been in the Stanley Cup final. He's also been in a conference final in his career. And I mean, I can tell you, he. Talking to him this morning, he's just so thrilled to be on a team that's good. It's set up for a uh, hopefully good long yeah. playoff run. I mean, he's been out of the playoffs for Met for the last five years. So uh, when you're getting on the back nine of your NHL career, that gets old quickly. Come to this organization and this opportunity and you know he's been very well schooled and coached by Dave Tippett who we yeah. think a lot of Pat out there in, in Arizona and, you know for Mets a guy that can give you a little bit of everything he can give you the face-off dot give you a second line centerman play the power play kill some penalties a real versatile guy and gives Joel Quinville lots of options and nothing better as a head coach to have options yeah be real uh you know, it's a work in progress, but you know, on the other hand, you look in the rearview mirror, Pat, and the Blackhawks don't, you know, I mean, you know, say, you know, trying to figure things out and, and... Derby, nice move, good save, part the rebound. He made a second save, then a third on the Strassel. A couple of glorious opportunities. Is he okay, Crawford? Oh, they're calling the bench. He is not. He was uh, stretched maybe a little too far, a little awkwardly. So he's scraping himself up off the ice now, but you can see all of his teammates, whether they heard him yell or say, say something to alert them that he needed some help. Mike Gapsky, the medical trainer, will step on the ice to consult with his goalie. 5-1, his team leads. Well, after a terrific move by Nathan Gerby, creates the chance. Corey Crawford able to make the save, and Nestor Schill just not able to get that puck up and over Corey Crawford. And doing some flexing there during that TV timeout with head trainer Mike Gapsky. Still in the game and seems to be all right. Now oh, he plays it to Tay as an out comes for Steve. Well, Tay is with some room into the zone. Crisscrossing Tay trying to stick handles, could not get away from the tech of Hillen. And Hudobin covers. 
Patty, okay, a belated happy birthday to Alyssa Coldraws, also known as the Spark Plug. So, a belated happy birthday, who just turned 13 years of age on February the 16th. A big Pat Foley fan. Obviously, a very smart young lady. <laughs> Well, now here come the uh, Hurricanes. Jordan or uh, Eric Stahl with a centering pass that didn't work out. And now Falk will step into the zone. Landon Saad scoops it ahead. Chris Versteeg has some room. Chris crossing with Tate. And that puck went outside the line, so the whistle goes. By the way, while we're giving shout-outs, you mentioned your dad, and so happy for him that uh, he's able to retire and uh, his health will return to 100% very shortly. But a very sincere thank you to Mamo, Diana Olchek, the lovely and talented mother of my U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame partner and the mother of the assistant general manager of the <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes, the legendary Ricky Olchek. She sent up some uh, goodies up to our booth tonight with a nice little note. And uh, uh, nothing that... You won't be answering the phone when I call you on the way home tonight. You'll be having a for sales from here to uh, <laughs> the northern suburbs. I'll be very busy. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, Mamo, we uh, we love you and we love your contribution to our <laughs> well-being. Well, good win for the Hawks. <laughs> good to see Corey Crawford uh, staying in this game after getting looked after from uh, Mike Gatsky. And that's pass chased by Saad. Centering came all the way through. He's able to keep it in, but well, the Canes get it out to flex into the Blackhawks bench. Well, lots of good things in this game for the Chicago Blackhawks. They mentioned this earlier, their home record not been very good of late. And maybe just as important that he was with now. As Kevin and he told us, things solidifying. Now you know what your team is. The moves have been made. But offensively, you pump five in tonight against a team that had won their last three games. Yep. Now, except for an empty netter that the Hawks got in Florida the other night, they had gone, except for that empty netter, they'd gone seven straight with two goals or less. I mean, the offense had really been sporadic, if not sputtering. So a game like this, with the additions that have been made, I think this has got to do a world of good for this hockey club. Yeah, just a, a real confidence and uh, just simplifying your game and, and knowing that the, the changes that have been made. And, you, know, you mentioned that in that interview with, with Kevin Denny, just about the excitement this morning and the understanding of where this team is and where it's trying to get back to. So you know, there's a offensive part of the game. You're right. It, it's, there's a lot of confidence in it, and it's, and it's infectious. A dump in from Shaw with three and a half to go. Kirby sends it ahead. Bumblad. We can get that one out. Well, that's for sure work in the corner. It rolled away from him. Also turned back. Steal by the Canes. Rico got it back. Work at center. Falk picked it up. Justin Falk shot partially blocked. The save required from Hufford. 
Held in by the Canes, but stolen by Richards, getting it out. And a good stick there from Richards defensively. Here's seven. Dropped it back. A false shot. Handled by Crawford. No rebound. Well, time now for our AT&T U-verse upcoming schedule. And my great partner mentioned the next game here for the Hawks is at the United Center Friday night against the Edmonton Oilers. And then Sunday night, the New York Rangers will be here over on NBCSN. And then the Hawks will head to... Arizona will take on the Coyotes. Jordan Stahl to brother Eric. He had to make a pass, comes back to him. Hainsey for Eric Stahl. His pass, so he's looking for a stick in front, didn't get the redirect. And Zalmerson got it out of there. Minute and a half to go in the game. And the Hurricanes, McClement to seven. Eric Stahl, standard at seven, open net, nice move. He pulled it in the backhand and flipped it home to an open side. Carolina now down three. Well, all kinds of time here for Alexander Summon. Has a puck on his forehand, he doesn't shoot it, he brings it back to the backhand. And I believe it was Lindholm, Pat, that was standing right in front of the net, causing a little bit of a screen there with Kimo Tiemann and Corey Crawford as anticipating the shot, and Semin goes from the forehand to the backhand. And we talked about his two goals this year in 37 games, had some injury issues, healthy scratch at times, but he gets his third of the year. One minute in the regulation time. One minute. Oh, the Canes. Had a shot blocked in the final minute of the action. Zod is checked. Perry took it away, and Lyles cleared to center right. Perry got turned around. This is what I really well. Derek Stahl, number 18, Jim McClellan, at 1850. Carolina goal was started. My mistake, Pat, it wasn't Lindholm in front of that. was McClellan standing in front of the net with Kimo Tiemann in on that last. Uh, it only took you 64 <laughs> games to make a mistake. <laughs> Another minus. Overrated stat. <laughs> We told you what happened earlier. Here it is now. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Oh, Jonathan Taves. And a goal in the first period. And a goal in the second period. Short-handed. After a beautiful pass there from Duncan Keith. A three-point night for the captain as assist came on the goal by Marion Hosa here in the third. The clock winding down. And the Chicago Blackhawks pick up their 38th win. They're 17 games over 500. Corey Crawford victory number 25. And this now is the 27th time in 42 games that Crawford has given up two or less. Yeah, you get goaltending like that. Now, a couple of spurts here and there for Carolina here tonight. This wasn't a tough game for Corey Crawford, but those numbers, Pat, they don't lie. And it allows you to play to your strengths when you know the goaltender is in a zone and he's not going to give up a soft one. And look, I mean, Corey Crawford's still, I think, working his way back to prior to the off-ice injury, Pat. There's no doubt about it. But we've seen it at times where he's been able to give the Hawks an opportunity. Like you said, the numbers, the Hawks finally get an opportunity to score a few goals and give the goaltender a little bit of breathing room. So some happy teammates congratulate one another on their way off the ice after a one-sided win over the Carolina Hurricanes. Let's check out the three-star selection. Brought to you by Bud Light.
the number three star of the game from the Blackhawks with one assist. Number four, Nicholas Jolmerson. The number two star of the game from the Blackhawks with two assists. Number 32, Michael Roosevelt. And the number one star of the game from the Blackhawks with two goals and one assist. Number 19, Jonathan Taves. Please turn your attention to the Blackhawks bench where Luke Stuck fires with tonight's number one star of the game, Jonathan Taves. Jonathan, what was the reaction inside the dressing room the other day when Stan Bowman went out and made three big moves going up to the trade deadline? Well, there's always uh, talk, you know, around the, uh, the trade deadline, but we, you never know what's going to happen. I think for the most part, uh, we're focusing on ourselves as a team, uh, the guys we do have in the room. But uh, I think we're happy with the additions we made to our locker room, and uh, it showed tonight, so we're really excited going forward. How do you build that chemistry with just 19 games left in the season and get new guys involved? Well, you try your best to make those guys feel comfortable in the room and on the ice, and, uh, you know, I think we're well on our way to doing that. And, um, you know, I think everyone in the room wants to play better and uh, play the best hockey going in, into towards the playoffs. Two goals for you tonight. Uh, talk about the passes that set those up to set you free. Well, some nice plays, and uh, we've been getting a lot of opportunities like that lately, so it's nice to get a, a couple early in the game and get us going on the right foot. So got the crowd into it, and uh, it was a big win at home, so we're excited. Congratulations, and keep it going. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Jonathan Taves, his 29th career multi-goal game tonight. He's your number one star.